story you don't see every day. The boat I just showed you was set adrift four or five weeks ago now, uh, halfway to Australia from Roti, Indonesia. Two guys who we met left here, uh, sailing to Darwin, got in some trouble. I don't know exactly, I haven't spoken with them, but anyway, they decided to get off the boat. They got picked up by a, I think a coal ship or a cargo ship of some sort and taken to Perth, Australia, and their boat was just set adrift. It didn't sink, obviously, and yeah, four or five weeks later, the current, we've been watching it the last week, it sort of brought it up uh, close to Roti here. The Australian Border Force has been keeping an eye on it and giving people updates of its location because it's a marine hazard. And uh, yeah, a few days ago, some guys from Savu, 70 miles from here, found it out in the middle of the ocean. Pretty hard to find a small boat. It's only 37 foot in the big, big ocean. But they found it and uh, a guy from here, Dave, went over there on a ferry a couple of days ago and they're just arriving back in here. So the owner is probably very, very happy. I guess he gave his boat up for lost when he stepped off the boat. He probably thought he'd never see it again. And yeah, it's going to be anchored here for him and he can come and get it again. Pretty awesome. Yes, well done. Bravo. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, you arrived under sail, yeah. Engine not working? Ah, oh. oh, that's well done though, that's a good effort. You're pretty lucky you had good southerly winds the last two days, eh? Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, it's the next three days of southeast even, yeah. Well done. Everything else is good, not getting water? Lots of work to be done, yeah. Oh yeah, but it's floating mate, it's floating. Well done. Yeah. Well, that is a really cool story. They uh, left Savu under sail, obviously just arrived here under sail as I showed. The water pump was uh, is not working on the engine. So yeah, they just sailed the whole way here and threw the, threw the anchor down and a uh, fair bit of work to do he said on the boat, but yeah, it's saved. It's not washed up on a beach. It's not hit by another ship. Pretty awesome uh, story that. And I'm guessing the owner's going to be really, really happy about that news. We got a phone call on a Sunday evening uh, that Dekanga was about approximately 30 nautical miles off uh, Umbrella. So we went on, got on to uh, search and rescue in, in, on, in, on Rotti Island and all that, and they tried to um, assist us and all that, and they were quite keen to do it. But by the time they got the approval, the yacht had already moved on towards Savu. And then, so uh, with a local friend uh, from Savu, living on Roti here, he, he had the contacts in Savu and he went along and got on to search and rescue in Savu. And they assisted by um, circumnavigating uh, Savu with two, two boats, one going clockwise and one going anti-clockwise. And they, they never found it because the tracking um, device which was put on by Australian Commander Force uh, were 10 hour delays from uh -huh. when they got their tracking to yeah. when they actually um, gave emails to the owner of the yacht. And in the meantime the yacht's moving at two knots. Well actually it was in quite a strong current of um, yeah, over three knots. So, uh, so you've got 30 miles of movement. In a 10 hour yeah, period. 10 hours. Who knows where the yacht is yeah. Yeah, after that period. Yeah. And I heard the yacht didn't have any lights on so you couldn't find it at night and in the day, the AIS was 
working but sort of broken, only very short range? Well, um, well nothing was working at by okay. then because um, all the batteries were dead okay. and that, yeah, so there was no power on the boat. So you had to visually sight it? So it had to be visually sighted and, yeah. and the luck of, um, the, of the recovery of the, of the yacht was that uh, um, my friend uh, who was uh, coordinating with uh, Search and Rescue and, and the police in um, Sabu uh, went along and said, oh, what about we just put it on the Sabu group Facebook? <laughs> so he put it on there. And funny enough, one of the fishermen said, um, replied and says, oh, I saw that this morning on my way home from ah, fishing. And yeah. that's how um, the recovery of the yacht happened. And so they didn't go and look at it because they figured there was probably someone on board yeah, just, just sailing assumed, or drifting. They just assumed yeah. someone was on it, asleep yeah. or yeah, 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 doing yeah. whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right, so then, you, then what happened? You went over there? Yeah, so the boat was recovered by the fishermen who spotted it um, with coordination with the, the local police from Rajua, yeah. which is an island south of um, Sabu. And they towed it back to Rajua, and then we then had to get a, a ferry to uh, Kupang and a ferry to Sabu, and then we had to get a, a local uh, sort of goods ferry boat to Rajua, and um, we recovered the boat. But it, it wasn't a simple process; it had to go through the protocol of um, the government, police, army, um, yeah, search and rescue there, and that. So it was quite a quite a, an yeah. effort to try and um, you know, for it all to be legally. Different levels of, of yeah, bureaucracy and, and locals and... Yeah, and yeah. To, to legally, you just can't just say, oh, this is my friend's boat, no. I'm going to take it, no. you know, it, was, it wasn't that yeah. simple. That. Yeah. So we then um, sailed it from um, Sabu to Roti. Um, Which is what, 70, 80 miles? Yeah, approximately 80, 80 nautical miles, yeah. 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 yeah so. but, but considering the boat was just drifting around the ocean for five weeks, and it had been stepped off, you know, people had been rescued off it, it was relatively good nick, right? I mean, it was it was seaworthy still. Yeah, 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 the, the hole and everything was all seaworthy. It wasn't leaking in full of water or anything like that. It was yeah, well, there, there was water in it. Um, apparently there were waves which were coming in through the, yeah. the uh, from the cockpit into the, the hole and that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there, but it was only a minimal amount of water. And it wasn't like, it was just a life-threatening situation yeah. for the boat and that or us being on it. As you see in the video, I, I filmed them coming in. It was just by luck that I was on, on Shehalia and saw them coming in um, under sail and putting the anchor down. And So we'll sort of skip over, the, you know, the next few days, you, you actually got it ready and then got it all running and took it up to Kupang, which is another 80 miles and, yeah, and yeah. tried to go through customs to get it back in the country because obviously the previous owner had checked out of Indonesia to go to Australia. Yeah. Yes, and that, that was what it was. And then, so you then you came back here with it We'll skip over those details, that's Indonesian customs bureaucracy. Yeah. But basically the boat had two months time yeah. here, it was given two months a window before it had to depart Indonesia again. And that was enough time to get the motor running, get the electrics fixed up, patch the Geno, all that sort of stuff and get it basically seaworthy and then figure out who was going to take it to Australia. Then skipping ahead a few more days, we had a, a westerly wind and this is open to the west, this harbour here in Numbrala. So, we in Shehalia, we took off to another anchorage on another island and then four days later came back and I didn't see Dekenga anymore and I was, only an hour or so later I was looking around and I saw a hull sticking out of the water. This hull you see here in these shots. And I came, came round in the dinghy to have a look at it and I saw Dekenga and I was just like, oh my god. Yeah. After <laughs> all of that, you know, like all of the hassle of the people getting rescued, it was floating around. You, you going over there, dealing with all the bureaucracy, actually sailing it back here, going to all of that, getting it all ready, and it's like, the guy in Australia is going to get his boat back, and then I came back to see it on the reef. Yeah. So yeah, take, take us from that stage, <laughs> what happened there? Well, um, there was a short swell running in that, uh, the boat was on anchor, and the, the anchor did hold, the, the anchor didn't drag or nothing. What had happened was, on the deck, the, um, the snub rope, which wasn't a proper snub, but it was the best we could do. It was just tying a knot to the chain. Well, that had snapped, and um, the whole anchor body came off from the surface of the deck. Okay, so, so once the snubber rope broke, then the full 
the boat was going up and down the yeah, short yeah, swell. Yeah, so the short And then the whole the jerking quite. motion was on the winch itself, and that pulled it right out of the deck. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, it sheared the bolts, which were quite large bolts. Um, it broke the casing of the of the winch and yep. stuff. So. Yeah. So then the the anchor winch broke. Yeah. And the boat basically just went back. Yeah, it let all, its, let all its chain yeah, and so its that, rope out. So, so, so it, it wasn't free, but it was just going backwards on the chain. Yeah, it, it just, everything everything extended yeah. out on, 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 on from the boat. So yeah. instead of having 30 metres of chain or 40 metres of chain we had out, it, it was you know, up to around 80 odd metres. Yeah. So and as you can see from these drone shots, we are in between, we're basically in a reef channel here like yeah. in a lagoon channel so there's reefs. reef on both sides they surf on both sides and and it's just what it is so basically just pull back all the chain and hit the reef with the stern yeah and put a hole in it and sank right there yeah exactly and so then, it's then, a write-off yeah. the boats the boats finished everything's yeah. been um yeah. salvaged off it that can be salvaged off it pretty much yeah. um so there, there's some lessons for, for you for your viewers anyway like um, getting a boat for 20, 30 grand and thinking, oh yeah, I'll just sort of fix it up as I need to, works fine if you're just staying around your harbour and you're learning and you're doing this, but setting off on an international crossing, you got to take it seriously. Yeah, I think, I think the whole point of what I'm trying to say is that um, a cheap boat is not necessarily a deal because, no. um, you know, if you're buying a boat, and it's probably under the fifty thousand dollar, maybe even a hundred thousand dollar mark. You've got to be prepared to spend another twenty to thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, and and the, to get and the time, work. and don't spend that money on a nice paint job and some, you know, yeah. new uh, paddle boards in a dinghy. Like actually, the, the the most important things are the standing rigging, yeah. the anchor system, the engine, the rudder. That's the other thing. The rudder fell out of this thing, right? The rudder. When I saw it before you left, the rudder was wobbling like yeah. this. It was about to fail oh. as well, which which could lead to a crashed boat anyway. Yeah, yeah. The paint job's not going to save your life. Yeah. The stereo system, the the fancy spinnaker, the the drone to film yourself. None of that's going to make any difference. But the well, making sure the keel and the rudder are going to just all the structural things. As I um, look back on it now, I'm. I'm I'm sort of glad we didn't send somebody else on the oh, boat to take to Australia yeah. because there, yeah. were, there were going to be a lot of risks um, yeah. in, in doing the trip again, even though the weather this time of year is quite good for the journey back to But it would have been meant motoring and that motor wasn't really up yeah, to the, it. Yeah, the motor wasn't up to it, no. um, even you though we were, we were trying our best to uh, to, to get it and, and, and getting parts in Indonesia for, yeah. for that type Terrible. of motor, Perkins motor. Yeah. It's difficult, yeah. and uh, the boat had no autopilot. That was another thing, which which made it hard to, to do yeah. if he was, you know, going by some by themselves. Yeah, I'm sure the owner of the boat in Australia went through some emotional roller coaster <laughs> days sure and is. nights, thinking lost the boat, but I'm safe. I got rescued. Five weeks watching the boat, watching the tracking, all of that, and then Recovery. when you found the boat, you've been woohoo, <laughs> yeah, gonna exactly. get my boat <laughs> back here. Even more woohoo. Yeah. And then to get, how did he say, how did he feel when you sent him the first message saying the boat sunk? Oh, he was obviously devastated and, and, and that, um, yeah. it was a pretty short conversation. He had to go to work of course, but um, but then he did contact me um, a couple of days later and he says, look, I know you tried everything you could and um, he pretty appreciates it and, yeah. and all that and he's, he's got nothing to hold against me, but even though it wasn't my fault, but um, I sort of feel a bit... Saddened that you know this has all happened after yeah. all the effort we yeah, made yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, well, it's yeah. never nice to see a boat sink. That's yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Anyway, good stuff. Thanks very much. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah hopefully oh, uh, we only tried like like every person who does a lot of sailing, and that is to help other sailors. Yeah. And that's probably the reason. Well, that's we what I got here in Rotti too. There was that all of the guys here. They've all a lot of them have got sailboats or the little trimarans, and everyone was very concerned for that five weeks and plotting it and looking oh how can we get it and all that yeah. like everyone oh, yeah. and it wasn't for any other reason than to help a fellow sailor that had just had a had a whoopsie you know so yeah I mean that that's a good good feeling it ended up in a bit tragedy but the, the thought was there and the effort was there from everyone and, and, and money from from you and uh, Joel was it Joel yeah, Joel, yeah, yeah. local yeah. guy so yeah props to you guys for giving it a try and um, yeah yeah we did our best yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right cheers mate, mate yeah anyway. no worries yeah <laughs>